Hello, this is a BC VRS update. We have some information regarding two groups who met with the CRTC, the Canadian Association of the Deaf and the BC VRS. CAD, or Frank Foligno, met with the CRTC. That was on the 23rd of January. And the BC VRS Committee at Odin Nigel Howard and Lisa Kellett Anderson met on the 31st of January. When I got the information back from both of those meetings, I found it very interesting because the information was different. So I'd like you to watch their reports and then I'm going to add my perspective on my take on what I thought of that outcome or those meetings. Hello everyone. My name is Frank Foligno. I am the Vice President of the Canadian Association of the Deaf, CAD. This informative vlog is to summarize the points of our meeting at the CRTC headquarters held on Wednesday, January 23rd, 2013, in Gatineau, Quebec. The people involved in the meeting were Jim Roots and myself representing CAD, along with the CRTC staff, including the Social Policy Manager, the Director General for Consumer Affairs, the Chief Consumer Officer, and the CRTC Legal Counsel. These individuals are the ones responsible for research, law, and accessibility policy on VRS issues. The CRTC was very cognizant of the Awareness Day held across Canada. We gathered to reflect on our gratitude to the CRTC for the accessibility accomplishments during the last 40 years, including closed captioning, TTY, 911 TTY, and IP text relay. The CRTC are very appreciative of the gratitude we've shown them, and at the same time strongly acknowledge that deaf people want VRS, a national VRS service, no question. We at the CAD wholeheartedly thank the BC VRS Committee for partnering with us and planning and publicizing such a successful event. As many of you know, back in July of 2012, after the one-year VRS trial, Bell and TELUS submitted their individual reports, each containing eight questions to the CRTC. The current update, so you're all aware, is that the CRTC has explained their approach of hiring consultants to conduct studies of two important areas, VRS operations and VRS products. For VRS operations, they studied in detail VRS services of other countries to find which model is the best fit for Canada. For example, they looked at Australia's service, which provides VRS 24-7 with only 10 interpreters and a budget of only several hundred thousand dollars. The question is whether or not that model will work well in Canada. Secondly, they studied the global context on market availability and using VRS products to be provided within operations and which model best suits a bilingual national VRS service in Canada. The consultants report focusing on funding concerns, bilingualism and interpreter availability has been submitted to the CRTC staff and will be published on their website very soon, within the next few weeks. We will let you know when it has been posted. The public hearing is where various representatives will physically gather in front of a panel of CRTC commissioners at their headquarters in Gatineau, Quebec. The representatives would be CAD advocates, the BCVRS committee, 
various advocacy organizations, government lawyers and representatives, industry representatives, telecommunications service providers, and a variety of others to express their position and perspectives on VRS issues, whether they are for or against providing the service. These positions will weigh in on the CRTC Commissioner's final decision. On the contrary, the public proceeding is not a physical presence, but is being conducted online, where the CRTC will gather submitted information through a consultation process. That's the difference between the two. As many of you are aware, the CRTC released their three-year plan on September the 6th, 2012. It's a very concise outline containing general objectives of their planned activities for the next three years. We approached the CRTC with the concern that the sections related to VRS were rather ambiguous. The CRTC informed us that there will be an updated version of the three-year plan published to their website in April 2013 as an expanded version of the three-year plan published in September 2012. This updated version of the three-year plan will determine if the CRTC expects to provide an outcome for VRS issues here in Canada. Unfortunately, there will be no public hearing this spring, and the CRTC will not be able to make a decision for 2013 on VRS in Canada. We will have to wait for the new version of the three-year plan to be announced in April 2013 that will determine when the CRTC will make a decision for VRS in Canada. However, the good news is that CRTC staff responsible for law, research, and policy on accessibility issues are now ready to submit all ground framework including the Bell and TELUS reports the two consultants' reports, as well as other information, to the CRTC commissioners who will review these documents before making a final decision in the next step. We had a good productive meeting with CRTC staff and we look forward to a follow-up meeting with them again very soon in March. Also, we strongly encourage all of you to continue our work in getting VRS in Canada, such as writing letters to your federal members of parliament, signing petitions, and writing the CRTC provincial commissioners. Please do not give up. It is so important for the CAD to collaborate with groups like the BC VRS Committee, Provincial VRS Committees, as well as all of you as individuals to work together for our common goal to bring video relay services to Canada in official sign languages, ASL and LSQ, and official spoken languages, English and French. That is our key common goal. The CAD will produce two more vlogs, one to provide a more detailed and comprehensive description of 911 access, and the other vlog to describe our anticipated action plan. The CAD still continues to meet with various people and groups such as social justice organizations, CRTC commissioners and staff, federal members of parliament, and many other parties to establish VRS services. However, CAD cannot do this advocacy alone. With everyone lobbying members of parliament and advocating for the cause, we will be able to make VRS a reality. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to contact me anytime. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to clarify. When Frank Foligno 
met with the representatives from the CRTC. Those representatives were not the commissioner, but they were the assistants to the commissioner. They didn't come with a whole lot of information. They really were passing along information. They were not able to answer the questions in great detail, and so Frank received some information, but limited. However, Nigel Howard and Lisa Anderson Kellett came back with a great deal more information as they met with the commissioner, who works quite closely and is very familiar with the VRS issues. So the information that they gleaned was much more in depth. So let's watch what they have to say. Hi there, my name is Nigel. My role with BC VRS is to liaise between the CRTC and the BC VRS committee. I pass information back and forth between these two committees. That's right. And I'm Lisa Anderson. Uh, I'm the communication officer responsible for disseminating information to both the public and the deaf community. That's great. Wonderful. So the two of us met with the CRTC in downtown Vancouver on January 31st. We met with Stephen Simpson, Stephen is a representative for BC Yukon. We had a three hour meeting to sit down and talk to him. We wanted to find out what was going on with the establishment of video relay services. Lisa and I are now going to take the time to highlight what came from that meeting. The CRTC is well aware of the deaf community's desires and needs for video relay services. Currently, there are three groups that the CRTC has to look over. Private companies such as Shaw and Rogers, the federal government, and the lawmakers. Currently, the chairperson for the CRTC is trying to be people-focused, looking at their needs for communication services. In the past, they have been focused on big business, but now they are going and looking towards the people. There's a three-year plan that we have to follow through all the steps. As each process is successful, the services could come to fruition. The CRTC is an independent organization. They regulate, supervise, and promote broadcasting, and telecommunications, and that's right across Canada. They are the organization that reports back to the government what's happening with television and radio services. The CRTC reports back to two groups, the Ministry of Industry and the Ministry of Canadian Heritage. They're the ones who look at the rules and policies that are being made and make sure that they are following the mandates of the Canadian government. Currently, those rules and policies are grossly out of date. They're doing a lot to try to amend them. So, for example, uh, we currently have the Broadcasting Act of 1991, and that act focuses particularly on television, radio, and communications. And then we have the Telecommunications Act of 1993, which focuses primarily on the use of the telephone. However, when we look at current standards in 2013, we're dealing with things like wireless, internet, mobile cellular use, Wi-Fi, um, you know, broadbanding. And so with the additional senses of technology, they're not included in the act. So unfortunately, you can't have video relay services without the internet, and you can't have it without cell phone coverage. So what we need to do is update the Broadcasting Act, in which what the cable companies fall under, and the wireless companies fall under the Telecommunications Act. So it's a process to update those acts. That's right. Currently, there's nothing legal developed for the Wireless Act. There's nothing that correlates 
with mobile phones, with cell phones. The law is really outdated. Currently, we know that wireless is an issue. If you sign on with a cell phone provider, you have a three-year contract in which you have to pay your fees. They have the right to charge you and add charges. It really becomes quite expensive. Currently, the CRTC is making amendments to the wireless code. Their goal is to eliminate all of those problems. Really, to update it, to make sure all the laws and rules are current. Next, they'll be looking at cable broadcasting and television. They want to look at all the rules and laws there and try to amend them. Once those two areas have been successfully changed and updated, we'll be able to address video relay services. There are three critical groups we have to have involved. MPs, the CRTC regulatory body, and you, Canadian citizens. By having you, we can move forward. So just going back to what Nigel said earlier about the lawmakers, that also includes our MPs and the public, which means you. In order to make things happen, we need you. Stephen has definitely confirmed that we're on the right path, which is very critical for all of you to go and meet with your MPs in the riding that you reside in. Educate them. Promote VRS. Give them information about VRS and why you support VRS and why is it critically important to you. So once you meet with your MPs, we need to get 25 signatures of people in your riding. Once you provide that, we're hoping that lots of deaf people across the Canada will be able to collect up to 156 members of parliaments. We have to have a standardized sense of information that's being provided to your MPs. So that includes the petition, um, access our website at bcvrsc.ca and provide that to your MP. So I'm just going to explain a little bit about the process of how the CRTC works with the public. So for example, if people provide written submissions or comments or letters, whether it's online, the CRTC takes a long time to respond. It's quite a process. So for example, um, there may be proceedings that have a phase one. When we talked about the wireless code, last year they had phase one and now is the second rounds of comments for roundtable discussions. They provide the information to the public to see what they think about that. I think you might have also seen a word online that's called the NOC, the Notice of Consultation. That's where you apply to actually make comments and rationale as to why you would like to appear. And so there's a record of application showing that you appeared in the, the meeting or orientation. So within that process for written submissions, it's really important that um, there's also time standards conducted. So a session may last anywhere from 30 days to 60 or possibly 90 days before there's even a consultation that's proposed. That includes participation of comments, feedback. So for example, with our recent petition to the CRTC and all the comments that were uh, recited, that's put on file for review during the consultation meetings. The next step will be for the CRTC to compile and analyze all the data collected, whether there was feedback put on Twitter, whether there was online comments, they will make a decision on which is the right path and which session that our agenda will go to. There are two kinds of meetings that the CRTC holds. The first is a non-appearing meeting. That meeting has seven staff members who deliberate and make decisions. That meeting is a private meeting and is not open to the public. The second type of meeting is an appearing meeting where Canadian citizens can come in and address their issues. 
So at the first meeting, it's private. The second meeting is a public meeting where anybody can attend. The hearing can last from anywhere in length of one day to one week to one month. The CRT st CRTC staff document everything that happens in that meeting and takes it back. There are approximately 20 to 30 CRTC employees involved in that meeting. They take the time to document everything that happens and organize all that information. The information comes from Canadian citizens. Really, the process of organizing and amalgamating all the information does take some time. BCVRS strongly encourages you to watch the proceedings that are about to happen, what the process is for the CRTC to set up the next regulatory bodies. We want you to pay attention to what's happening with the wireless code issues that are happening right now. Pay attention to what's going on, what they're doing, and how they're mandating everything. Once a wireless code proceeding is done, they're going to be working on the internet and television proceedings. Pay attention to what they're doing with that as well. If you're involved in those processes, it will help you understand what we need to do to establish video relay services in BC. This is critical. September 21st, 2012 was VRS Awareness Day. The CRTC was proud to report that they heard our voice that we wanted a national VRS uh -huh. service in Canada. That's right. And the CRTC was also impressed with the fact that we made a peaceful demonstration. Many organizations in the public are not so uh, polite, but we were. And that means that we don't need to have another gathering. However, we're still here to work in collaboration with all of you. They did notice that at first the deaf community seemed a little bit divided. The CRTC reported back to us saying that it was very important that we come together with the common goal of having video relay services. Mm-hmm, that's right. Stephen was also very good at reporting to us about the Ministry of Heritage and the Ministry of Industry. When we spoke to him, we asked him who we needed to talk to. He said that it was important for us to send off letters to both ministries. They need to know that Canadian citizens want video relay services. The other question we took back to him was about the Office of Disabilities. We said that there was one that was supposed to be set up and he was shocked that nothing had happened. At this point, he said he was going to look into it and let us know what was going on for the Deaf Act. Yeah, exactly, because the BCVRS committee really feels that it would be really important to have somebody internal who could really clarify some of the VRS issues, the impact for the community. Mm -hmm, that's right. Regardless of what it is, if you're deaf or if there's another disability that's going on, that disability access office is supposed to be mandated through the CRTC and it's supposed to be a direct line of communication for us to make things a little bit easier. That's right. We are planning on meeting every three months with Stephen just to get updates, to find out what's going on, to network, to talk, to give each other feedbacks and provide perspective on what's going on. Also to find out the appropriate approaches and steps we need to be taking. Yeah, and Stephen was willing to answer the questions that we provided, so I look forward to meeting with him the next time. Mm -hmm. Yes, me too. I really do look forward to it. So we will take questions back to him. If you have any concerns, we'd be happy to do that. As well as we find out more information, we will be posting more vlogs. So what did you think? Did you find the information interesting? I certainly did. I'm taking a look at it from a participant perspective as an audience member, and I thought I would just give you my take on it. I think overall the concept of VRS within Canada and CRTC, I mean, I've gleaned a lot of information and I've realized over the period of time that here in Canada, we are really far behind on a number of issues. For example, the wireless code. I mean, we are so up, out of date on that. 
and it's the year 2013. Now, as with VRS coming on the scene, it's really important that we have access to VRS and the Internet. I mean, it's really a good thing that we're pushing this agenda forward. It's the time is ripe. And I think the CRSTC is feeling the need to get the wireless code up to date and current. And we need to attend to this as soon as possible. The other thing that I realized too, that the timing is really crucial because we're at a good place. We've established a good re working relationship with the CRTC, as well as some MPs. And I think the agenda has become more public and people are, are wondering what's going on with VRS. And I also think that the deaf community needs to keep oversight and keep the agenda on the table and work together with the CRTC so that we can establish our own Canadian VRS industry. And we also want to look at what's been happening in other VRS provider countries as we begin to formulate our own regulations and legislation. We want to be able to not repeat the mistakes, but to come up with a better format. And I know I'm repeating myself, but I need to say it again. The BC VRS, and me personally, I think I really want to encourage all of us across Canada, provincially, to establish our own, your own VRS committees. As it stands now, we have a VRS committee in BC, and then Alberta, and then Ontario. And that's really three provinces representing 13 provinces across the country. And three provinces can't do all the work. It's just not feasible. And I also believe that the government is interested in seeing a unified voice. We're, we're all working together rather than breaking off into separate groups. I think the work could be much more efficient if we work together. So as far as establishing a VRS in your own province, it's feasible. You can do it. You know, speak to your CRTC commissioner in your province. Sit down with that person as a new committee and start building a relationship with that individual. If you have any questions or need clarification, by all means, please contact us at the email address below.